solve the following triangle for x. So we'll have one angle, 60 degrees, length of the opposite side will be 10, lengths of the other sides will be 3 and x. For a solution, we're going to use the law of cosines. Now, what do we have here? So we're going to have a triangle, we're going to have an angle, capital C, length of its opposite side is going to be small c, and then the other sides will have lengths a and b. Law of cosines will state little c squared equals a squared plus b squared minus 2ab cosine of capital C. So let's sort out our items and then load them into the equation. So capital C is going to be 60 degrees for pi thirds. Small c is going to be 10. B is going to be x. A is going to be 3. We'll go to the equation. We'll have 100 equals 9 plus x squared minus 6x times cosine of pi thirds. Now, cosine of pi thirds is going to be 1 half. Okay, the way I remember that. So we're comparing pi thirds versus pi six. Pi thirds is going to be the higher angle. So that's going to have a smaller cosine. And then your choices of cosine are either one half or square root of three over two. Square root of three over two is about 0.87, so we go with one half. Now, when we sort this out, put everything on one side, we'll get the equation x squared minus three x minus 91 is equal to zero. So we go to the quadratic equation. We'll have x is equal to 3 plus or minus 9. Okay, minus or minus gives me a plus. 4 times 91 all over 2. Okay, we simplify. We get two solutions. One's going to be negative, so I throw it away. So we're left with 11.2. Here's an alternative solution. So we can consider this a check in our work. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to lay our base flat. So this length along the bottom is going to be x. We're going to take the top vertex. And we're just going to take the segment that's perpendicular to the base. And then we'll call its length z. Now, that's going to split up our base into two segments. So we'll call the length of the first segment x1, length of the second segment x2. Our triangle is split into two right triangles. So all we need to do now is work with right triangles and trigonometry. All right, let's start with the 60 degrees. So I have an angle and a hypotenuse, so we can find the other two sides. So for x1, the base, that's just going to be equal to 3 times the cosine of 60 degrees, since this is the adjacent. So that's going to give me 3 times 1 half, so we'll get 1 half for x1. Now for the opposite, that's going to be 3 times sine of 60 degrees, so that'll be 3 square root of 3 over 2. Okay, I want to move over to the other triangle. Now, I don't know what A is, but I can find its sine since I know the opposite and the hypotenuse. So the sine of A is just going to be Z over 10. So it's going to be 3 square root of 3 over 20. Now that I have the sine, I can find the cosine. So I'm going to use sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. And then we'll just isolate the cosine. So that's going to give me Okay, cosine is equal to square root of 1 minus sine squared. Okay, that's going to give me 1 minus 27 over 400, which is going to turn into square root of 373 over 20. That's going to be equal to, also, x2 over 10. So that's going to be our cosine, which is adjacent over hypotenuse. So that gives me x2 equal to square root of 373 over 2. If we work this out. We add it to our one and a half, we get 11.16, and when we round that, we get our 11.2 back. Now, where do we get our law of cosines from? We'll have a few ways we can show this. The way we're gonna do it here is using right triangles. So, first, let's assume that our segment of length z is on the inside of our triangle. Now, that's gonna make our triangle into two right triangles, and we want to work off the bases. So the base of the big triangle is going to have length b. For this triangle here, we have hypotenuse of length a, angle is going to be c, and then we want the length of the adjacent. So it's going to be a times the cosine of c. For this segment, same idea. We're going to get the length is c times the cosine of a, and then we sum. So we have b equals this sum. 
Now I'm going to push A cosine C to the other side. So it's going to isolate the C cosine A, and then we're going to square both sides. So on the left-hand side, I'll have C squared, cosine squared of A. I'm going to write cosine squared as 1 minus sine squared. Sine squared of A doesn't show up in our final answer, so no, I'm going to have to find a way to sub it out. So what we'll do is we'll look at the picture. Okay, I have angle A here. So sine of A is going to be the opposite over the hypotenuse. So I have Z over C. We square it. We get Z squared over C squared. The C squareds go away, and we're left with C squared minus Z squared. Now, we want to get rid of the Z squared also, so we'll push that over to the other triangle. So in this case, Z is going to be equal to A times the sine of C. So on the left-hand side, I'm going to wind up with C squared minus A squared sine of C squared. On the right-hand side, we're just going to square this term, so we'll get B squared minus 2AB cosine C. Okay, that's good. We're looking for this term, plus A squared cosine squared C. Now, if we put everything together, we'll get this equation here, and then all I have to do is push the A squared sine squared C to the other side. What happens? We have A squared plus B squared minus 2AB cosine of C. So that's my law of cosines. Now, what happens if the side of length Z is on the outside of our triangle? So our picture is going to look like this. We're going to need to get control of this angle C prime. So we'll have the C prime is equal to 180 degrees minus C. Okay, on the unit circle, this is C. C prime is going to be over here. So we'll have that the sine of C prime is equal to the sine of C. So we'll both have the same Y value. And then the cosine of C prime is equal to minus the cosine of C. So their X values have the same magnitude, they just have different signs. Okay, let's take a look at the base of our triangle. So we're going to relate it to the bases of two right triangles. In this case, what do we have? For B, what are we going to do? We're going to take the length of the big right triangle. So hypotenuse there is C. So its length is going to be C times the cosine of A. Then I'm going to subtract off this piece here. So that's going to be length A times the cosine of C prime. And then the cosine of C prime is just going to be minus the cosine of C. So you'll note we start off exactly like we did before. And then we just push things through. Now. A few pointers on how to remember the law of cosines. First pointer, Pythagorean theorem is a special case. So if we take a right triangle, label a right angle capital C, then the opposite side is going to be our hypotenuse. In this case, if we call the lengths of the sides A, B, and C, C being the length of the hypotenuse, then we have C squared equals A squared plus B squared. Now in the law of cosines, if we take capital C equal to pi halves. We want cosine of pi halves, that's going to be equal to zero. Okay, if we take the cosine of pi halves, find the point of pi halves on the unit circle, and then I take its x value. So that's going to be zero, so we know, okay, the law of cosines is going to collapse to Pythagorean theorem. Next pointer, making sure you put the minus sign there instead of a plus sign. So for this, you want to draw some pictures also. Let's consider what happens when you draw capital C as an acute angle, so between 0 and 90 degrees. Now, if you note here, what's happening? If I put in what's left of the right triangle, if we had C as a right angle, note what's happening. The old length C is now becoming the shorter length C. The old length B becomes a shorter length B. So if we just forget about this term here, we're going to have that C is definitely getting smaller. But the way I remember the minus sign is just to pretend that it's this piece that's making everything smaller. So you'll note, to get that to happen, I just need to note that this is a positive number. And that's going to happen because cosine of capital C is going to be between 0 and 1. It's going to be positive because we're in the first quadrant. So the x values are always between 0 and 1. Now, that same trick works with an obtuse angle. The idea here. We put in our right triangle just to compare. Okay, the side of length B. Okay, B is definitely getting larger, and then our length C is also getting larger. 
Now, in this case, if capital C is between pi halves and pi, so it's obtuse, cosine is going to be negative. So the minus sign that comes from the cosine is going to turn this to a plus sign. So we can think of that as adding on to our c squared. So that's how you remember that. If I have an acute angle, we're subtracting this part off. If I have an obtuse angle, we're going to add this part on.